Uh, my name's Jeff Edgell. I'm a director of SRAM. We're a research development and testing organisation based in Stoke-on-Trent. I've been heavily involved with BSI for a, a number of years now as chairman of B519, the committee responsible for masonry and masonry products. Uh, I'm also involved with the design committee and I'm usually the leader of the UK delegation to the Structural Eurocode Committee for Masonry Design. Thank you. Um, and can you just tell us a little bit about how the Eurocodes came to light and your involvement over the last however number of years? Well, I mean, Eurocode 6 for Masonry is part of the whole suite, which has been subject to a political decision that we're going to try and unify the approach to design of structures, in, including masonry structures, uh, throughout Europe. Um, my, my personal involvement has been really because uh, historically, SRAM has been the research arm of the UK uh, brick industry, and in order that products uh, get used successfully uh, around the country, it's important that any rules that we develop in our laboratories for design and construction of masonry, masonry buildings um, do actually get translated into codes of practice for design. So initially we took a great interest in getting, uh, getting our information uh, absorbed by the BSI committee that's relevant and of course as that has now been overtaken by Eurocode developments and, and British standard codes of practice it will be withdrawn in due course. It's important that we keep the momentum going and really to try and make sure that masonry design throughout Europe is not made any more complicated due to the involvement of the other countries around the Eurozone. What do you think are the um, biggest challenges that face the industry with using the Eurocodes? I think the biggest challenge is going to be to get, to get people to actually use them at all. Uh, certainly it's true in the, in the masonry sector. Um, well, we're, ex we're expecting uh, our consulting engineers to, to grasp and embrace and use the Eurocodes, whereas they have not really uh, taken a great deal of interest or been involved in the drafting work. And I think that's partly because it's gone on for a, a very, very long time. It's a very big commitment. And whereas manufacturers of building products can see that any rules that are incorporated in codes of practice which involve classification or, or categorization of products have a huge impact on the market, you can't automatically see that there's a tremendous benefit in engineers getting involved in the development of these things. But you know, when they come into practice, we're expecting them to use them. And so there is, in fact, a, a, a huge uh, learning exercise that's got to be undertaken right from a, a very uh, poor starting position. What do you think are the main differences between the Eurocodes and the British standards that they're going to replace? I don't think there are uh, tremendous uh, differences, really, because uh, the masonry codes of practice uh, have always, uh, since 1978, have adopted uh, limit state design, which is what we're using w within Europe. So that in itself is, is, is not dissimilar. Um, I think where there are going to be some difficulties is that the material that's, that's not been taken on board within Eurocodes um, and still at the moment resides in our, in our British standards. The, the, the issue has been in relation to uh, a lot of masonry construction that the traditional forms throughout Europe are very, very different. The forms of buildings that are used in, in southern Europe, for example, are very different to what we see around the fringes of the North Sea. And so, in, the, in order to cover all of those different systems, you would have had a very, very complex and very lengthy uh, series, uh, well, Eurocode for masonry design. By contrast, what has happened is that essentially some basic principles have been incorporated which need to be fleshed out on, on a national basis. So a lot of our material, which is currently in British standards, has got to be um, redrafted into non-complementary or into complementary and non-conflicting design guidance. Thank you. Any words of advice for people looking to use the Eurocode? Well, I think there are a lot, a lots of help. You know, there are Eurocode experts that you can, uh, you can contact online. So, you know, I would just encourage people to take full advantage of that and to make use of the media that, that BSI uh, are making available. Thank you very much for your time.